Hey guys, how are we doing? Welcome to Walking Boxing. Uh, it is uh, Monday, October 28th, 2024. And can you believe that we're only a couple of months away from Christmas? Just uh, bizarre. Uh, and about to enter November. November is obviously a good month for all the racing uh, fans out there. All the I think, I think they're actually going on at the moment, aren't they? But the Melbourne Cup's obviously the first week of November. I'm not a horse racing guy, but it's always good to get into uh, into the Melbourne Cup. Um, the weekend, the fights. Uh, I touched a little bit on it yesterday morning. I just finished watching the Jack Catterall Regis Progres fight. There's talk now that uh, Eddie Hearn wants to match Catterall with uh, Liam Paro if you can get past Richardson Hitchens. That is so. Yeah, entertaining fight. I like it. It should be a very, very good fight. On the other card, too, again, I didn't really touch much on it because I only saw probably a round of it, if I'm being honest. It was the Campbell Hatton. Uh, what was his name? Johnny Finn or something? What was his name? Um, whatever his opponent's name was. I can't remember. It was Johnny someone. Um, yeah, lost for the second time. Uh, yeah, I haven't really seen it. Again, I only watched the round of the fight. I did see a few highlights, but... Yeah, what right now for for young Campbell? It's a, it's, a, it's a tough road for him to travel. When you think, you know, probably obviously a little bit like Tim Zhu and other sons of legendary fighters. Uh, it's a tough, tough gig. The, the only issue with Hat, uh, with Campbell Hatton is that unlike probably Tim Zhu, I'm not quite sure he's got a lot of the genes from dad. He's a battler, um, but a lot of I'm not sure there's expectations, maybe expectations of, of himself, but just the pressure that he must be under. And I did see Eddie Hearn after the fight actually say that maybe Campbell's got to maybe reevaluate where he, he sits and in, in the world scheme and where he, what he wants to do and where he probably sees himself. And maybe he needs to go back to maybe some smaller cards and do it that way. But look, hey, good on him. He's, I think he's 14 and two or something like that. But uh, just from what I've seen, not just yesterday, but uh, in the past, it's going to be a bit of a long road, and I, I, I just don't see him at the level the level of his dad, unfortunately. And credit to him for having a, having a go and putting it all out there. I just hope they don't sort of overmatch him uh, and maybe you know get him hurt. But uh, but, but yeah, Eddie by by looking at what Eddie Hearn was saying yesterday, I think that they are going to reevaluate where he's at. And look, it was a close fight, apparently. Again, I only saw around or whatever it was and some highlights, but. Uh, two losses to this guy now, two split decision losses I think, or close decisions anyway, but yeah, so let's hope Campbell can, uh, can get, get himself sort of you know, organised and on track and work out what's, what's best for him uh, going forward. And look, there's plenty of room for fighters like Campbell Hatton just on the national circuit or the fringes of the world scene, you know, the regional belts, and they've just got to match him accordingly. But anyway, uh, on to some other stuff now, so probably, we'll probably cover a lot of the the current stuff to death in the last few weeks. I mean, we do this every day, so we, we, we've covered uh, lots of things and sometimes multiple times, but I did see something pop up yesterday and um, it was uh, Muhammad Ali. It was, this week is the 50th anniversary of the rumble in the jungle when he beat George Foreman to reclaim the world heavyweight title. And geez, 50 years now, I don't remember the fight, of course. I, would, I would think I might have been a year old or something like that, or might have been born that year. What was it, 74? So I would have been almost a year old. Actually, I would have been a year old, yes. I would have been a year old. I was born in 73. Um, yes, yeah, so obviously I don't remember it, but I remember the legacy of the fight. And to think that 50 years later, that legacy is still there. And what they did is they actually had a... Uh, a special occasion at Fighters Heaven. Now, if you've been following my videos over the journey, you would have known I've just gotten back from the States and I actually went to Fighters Heaven. This is uh, Fighters Heaven is Muhammad Ali's old training camp that has been uh, renovated and uh, remodeled or whatever it is by Michael Madden, who is the son of, now who is the football guy? Is it John Madden? I think it's his son and he bought the property and and renovated the whole thing and brought it back to its former glory and to be there i think i've said on here before it was literally like every muhammad ali and his camp were just out for the day doing something else and they sort of left it to us visitors to have a look at that's how good it was it was absolutely pristine it was exactly the way it was when muhammad ali was training there and uh, to walk around and just sit in his his uh or, 
literally sit on his bed where he used to sleep and um, you know, look at his mosque and go into the gym and um, into the, his kitchen. As I said, it was just like he'd left it. And what they did is they had a presentation of, I think they might have viewed the fight, but also the, the documentary When We Were Kings. And that was, of course, with uh, Muhammad Ali, Joe Fraser, uh, George Foreman, Ken Norton, Larry Holmes. And um, I think that's the video, isn't it? I hope I've got that right. Or is that the other one? We Were Champions. Whatever it is. The, the, the one about uh, the George Foreman and Larry Holmes fight. So they, they played that and apparently they had a lot of boxing, old, like old boxing riders there and some current day fighters. I'd see G uh, Jerry Cooney was there. Uh, I'm not sure whether Larry Holmes made an appearance, but anyway, there was a lot of, a lot of people there and, and they, they viewed the, the documentaries and the fight and, and uh, relived it all and, and just went back over it all. And, you know, you also, if you've been following these videos for a while, you would have seen, even last year, I went to Kentucky and I've got a bit of a connection with Muhammad Ali these, uh, these days after what I've done, I think. But I went to Kentucky, went to his childhood house, which is a, which is a bit of an effort. If you, if you haven't, well, if you've been lucky enough to be in there, you know what I'm talking about. But his, his old house is in a neighbourhood, let, let's just say it's probably not the place that you would go by yourself. But I did go by myself. Uh, I, did, I wasn't there for long. Uh, and I think a lot of people are actually used to visitors there. So I just pulled up the car, jumped out, uh, had a bit of look, this all... Uh, some memorabilia and you know some little trinkets and stuff people have left photos that people have left and not as many as I thought there would be I think they must get cleaned up or stolen or something but a little pink house and it used to be a little museum uh, the guy that owned it uh, turned into a museum at one stage and certainly wasn't when I was there it was shut shop but to be on his on his balcony of Muhammad Ali's house and to see old photos of him standing out the front of the house and think, wow, this is, it's one of those things, that's why I love getting over there and going to the history. I remember, just to quickly change subject for, for a second, I remember going to Dallas uh, about 10 years ago and going to the place where uh, Lee Harvey Oswald stood when he's dressed in black with a gun. Uh, if, you probably, if you followed the, that uh, case, you would, have, you would have seen the photo and he's standing there with a, with a gun and all dressed in black and I stood right there and to stand there thinking, you match it up with the photos and stuff, wow, just, just history. But anyway, that's, a, that's another. I'm actually going there next month, by the way, so I might put some videos up about that, going to Daily Plaza and the, uh, the Texas Book Depository and all that stuff. So anyway, that's, I'll get to that another time uh, in future videos. But, but to actually stand there, and then I drove to his grave, and that was really good because there was no one around. It was a beautiful day, and just... Um, yeah, just stood by his grave for probably 10 or 15 minutes and, and just took it in. I mean, it's a beautiful grave. It's just a headstone that just says Ali. And I expected actually to be a few people there, but uh, it was really good. Sort of out of the, out of the way a little bit. Uh, it was a place to park the car. And as I said, it was a beautiful, beautiful, sunny, warm day. And, and just to sit there and think, wow. Uh, and as I said, it was a beautiful headstone. I can't remember what was written in it, but just uh, to, st to sort of stand there. And I've got a little couple of little benches you can sit with and or sit on and just pay your respects. And again, if you haven't seen my videos, uh, they were last year, I think they were in July last year. And uh, I traveled from Oklahoma because that's where I was for George Cambosis' fight with uh, Maxie Hughes. Drove up to Memphis and did the whole Elvis thing and then drove to Kentucky or Louisville, Kentucky and uh, did uh, everything I could find with Muhammad Ali, including his his uh, the Muhammad Ali Center. And this is a, a, a learning facility. Again, it's on my videos, check it out. Uh, it's a learning facility about, you know, not really political sort of stuff, but just his views and just, it's a, it's a whole thing dedicated to him is probably what I'm saying. But they have lots of artwork dedicated to him and they actually have a, a mock-up of the, the fighter's heaven that I went to, the gym. And, and that's what was so cool about actually going to the proper fighter's heaven because um, they did it so well at the Muhammad Ali Center. They had it all set up and looked like an absolute, um, a, a, an actual replica of it and to actually go there and stand in there. And again, they've got photos all over the wall of, of you know, him training there and, and you now the big boulders out the front and you know, with the fighter's names on them. and. Yeah, it was sort of quite surreal. So, but it, the, the thing that sort of gets me thinking about it all is, again, the legacy that not only that fight left, but obviously Muhammad Ali himself. And I just think with Muhammad Ali, 
have we ever seen a more more of an icon in not just boxing not just in sport but just in life i mean the guy touched so many people and even if you weren't a, a boxing fan or even a sports fan everyone knew and knows of more importantly still muhammad ali all these years later i mean geez he had his last fight what 44 years ago uh, when he fought trevor burbick and i think that to this day kids of even young kids all know muhammad ali and and what other fighter can you probably think that about and and again might be a little bit controversial i think mike tyson is that guy uh i'm not saying he was at the level of muhammad ali i'm not going to get into the argument who was greater or that sort of stuff what i'm saying is is the only fighter i can probably think of in recent times that has had the same sort of cultural effects for good good and bad muhammad ali was probably more good mike tyson probably a little bit bad to be honest with a lot of the stuff he went he's been through but i think mike tyson will be the guy in 50 years time who a lot of the uh the kids then will say you remember that mike tyson you know he was he was a, a beast or an animal whatever it was and it's just every now and then just one of those those sort of guys come along but for muhammad ali yeah as i said 50 years later and it's still there and I don't think you've ever sort of heard anyone say anything bad about Muhammad Ali. And, and not just Muhammad Ali himself, but the fights of that era. His fights with Fraser, his, obviously the fight with Foreman, even the fights with Norton, um, and, and just you know, a lot of his other fights in general. The, and Liston, of course, I think it was 10 years after the Liston fight. Those fights are still remembered. And just that group, more so Ali, Fraser, and probably more, and Foreman, and, you could probably throw Norton in there. He fought everyone as well, except he didn't fight Fraser. But you sort of get where I'm coming from. That era, 50 years later, we're still talking about that era. And I just don't think we'll see that for a long, long time. When we talk about Hagler, Leonard, Hearns and Duran, well, we talk about Ali, Fraser, Foreman and, and, and Norton to some extent. Probably throw Holmes in there as well, even though he only fought uh uh ali later in his career and norton of course but yeah it's it's just once it's like one of those perfect storm situations where they all came together they had magnificent fights against each other but not just that they were all iconic in different ways i mean foreman's had a, a movie about him ali's obviously had countless documentaries and movies and and whatever about him which poses the question i suppose does, does joe fraser deserve uh, a movie about him as well. I know he made an appearance in Ali, but I suppose what I'm getting at is that have we seen it before and will we see it again? That cultural impact of three, maybe four fighters all fighting each other in a certain era and we're still talking about it 50 years later. Yes, boxing fans, they know all the big fights over the journey, but I'm talking about non-boxing fans, just sporting fans who they all know, Fraser, Foreman, and Ali. It's, it's just amazing. Uh, could we, we, look, who knows, maybe we had the opportunity when we had Fury, Wilder, and Joshua. Again, I'm not getting into who's better and all that sort of stuff, but they were probably the three big names at the time. We just didn't get it. Back then we got it, and numerous times. Ali fought Foreman once, Fraser three times. Fraser fought, what, Foreman twice and Fraser, uh, Ali three times so that little triangle there and again you throw Norton in there he didn't I know he didn't fight Fraser as I said but throw him in there sort of throw Holmes in there just come into it afterwards but yeah and, and and I'll be honest with you too with with um Larry Holmes I'm really sort of sad almost that he wasn't born you know 10 years earlier and he would have been thrown in the mix as well can you imagine a Larry Holmes it would have been you know the four or five kings thrown in there rather than just the three or four so um but either way um you know that's obviously didn't happen uh so you can't reflect on uh, on those types of things but yeah i just when i when i uh when i read about it and what they did at fighters heaven in uh Pennsylvania. now if you haven't uh, heard of it, it's in deer lake by the way in pennsylvania so uh, if you're in the area make sure you check it out it's well worth it it's absolutely free by the way to get in there Make a donation if you will. I bought a few t-shirts and whatever else and got a little uh, private uh, tour, so I was wrapped. Um, but yeah, if you can do that. But yeah, so anyway, it just got me thinking that 50 years later, we're still talking about it, uh, about how great that era was and how great Muhammad Ali was, how great George Foreman was and how great Joe Fraser was. And not to mention Norton and, 
and Holmes and Ernie Shavers and geez, the, the list goes on, Jerry Quarry, all that era. Probably the greatest era of heavyweight boxing in history. And uh, us old timers, all we can do is reminisce, I suppose, because these days, this is, this is probably, if you're a young person out there watching this, is, this is why we all say, back in my day, because it was so much better. There was no haggling over purses. There was no waiting it out to, for the right time to fight somebody. You know, there was no bullshit. Uh, yes, there was a lot of trash talking and, you know, all the rest of it, the same as what we get these days, but there was no social media bullshit. There was no who's, you know, this, this pissing contest you get these days. It was just great fighters fighting other great fighters, and it was such a, a great period. And again, not just that, when Hagler, Hearns, Duran, and Leonard were around as well, they all fought, fought each other multiple times, and no hesitation, I want to be the best, and I'm going to fight the best. And, uh, and we sort of got that a little bit, you know, when we had De La Hoya and Mosley and Trinidad and all those types of guys around. But I think, unfortunately, as much of a fan as Floyd Mayweather, I think the Floyd Mayweather um, situation, well, I won't call it a situation, the, the era of Floyd Mayweather has just changed boxing for now. I'm hoping that uh, it will change again. It seems to change by the era, but let's hope it gets back to those times where fighters used to fight each other without all the bullshit. They used to fight regularly. That's the other thing we don't sort of talk about too much as well is that those guys fought three, four, sometimes five times a year. Now some, now some fighters fight every 12 to 18 months. It's just, it's just ridiculous. But anyway, we can, we can hope. But that's what we mean, guys when, and girls, when we say um, back in my day, because it was just totally different. But anyway, guys, I've waffled on a little bit today. It's only Monday. We've got a long week to get through. Uh, but I thought I'd just bring that up because it just sort of, um, yeah, it just sort of strikes. Sometimes you, you read something about that and you're like, yeah, wow, well, what? Those were the days. Even though it was a little bit before my era, of course, uh, I still remember it. Um, and I've obviously researched it and watched it numerous times and it's just one of those perfect storm errors of boxing. So guys, that is gonna be it for today. Hope you have a great day and we'll catch you tomorrow.